My father also, he was in charge of postal workers. These are postal workers in Glasgow. They, they were tough men. They're not, you know, they're not guys who, um, who say, I, I'm lactose intolerant. Can we get soy in the cafeteria? They weren't guys <laughs> like that. And, and my dad was a, he's a big man, my father, and uh, he had a, a buzz cut, you know. Uh, he, he made him look like a, he had a scrubbing brush, you know, it made him look like that. And that was his nickname, he was called Big Scrubber. And the postal workers used to see me, you big scrubbers boy, you know. And so I would say, I'm little scrubber, I'm wee scrubber. But I could never really live up to that. And when I was broke, my dad gave me a job as a, as a temporary worker in the post office. Uh, it was in December, and it was back in the day when I was still drinking, and I got drunk, and I was an hour late for work, and my father was the boss. And I, I showed up at 5 a.m. instead of 4 a.m. It was, uh, you know, and another worker told me, your father knows you were late, and he's got a special assignment for you. And what he did was he sent me to Glasgow Airport to load mailbags onto the planes in December, and I've never been so cold in my life. <laughs> I remember Glasgow was on the same latitude as Moscow, and I had a terrible hangover. I, w I was late because I'd been drunk, uh, but I was never late for work again, I'll tell you that. <laughs> My father was a great whistler. Um, I don't know if that's important, but I, I remember it. <laughs> he could do that vibrato thing. <laughs> Fantastic. And he loved the Roadrunner cartoons. Uh, I've, s I've said that here. He it really made him laugh. I, I know. I, I don't get it either, but he loved the Roadrunner. <laughs> He also loved the, the Tweety Bird, uh, Tweety Bird and Sylvester. He just, he loved how stupid Sylvester was, I don't know why. <laughs> I can't stupid, that bird wins all the time, that's just... <laughs> I loved watching television with my dad. He, he, uh, he had very unique <laughs> viewing habits, me and him. I, I went to a school called Cumbernauld High School. Uh, the town was Cumbernauld, where I was, and... Whenever nature documentaries would come on TV with, you know, monkeys all scratching each other's asses and everything, <laughs> my dad would say, oh, there's Cumbernauld High School coming out. <laughs> and I, always, I, I don't know why it made me laugh, but it did. And, I, and he'd, over and over again for years. Um, and when we'd watch a horror film, whenever it was a, a, a scary horror picture uh, on TV, during the tense bit where the monster was kind of round the corner or something, my dad was always, you know, say, mind your back, mind your back. And I pretended that it didn't freak me out, but it really freaked me out when he did. <laughs> and when I, uh, when I was watching television with him, he used to, I used to sit in front of him, uh, and he would sit behind me and he'd, he'd put his hand on uh, my head. Uh, And I loved that. And he did it last week in the hospital. Probably the first time in, in 35 years or something. You know, he, from his bed, he put his hand in my head like that. And it, was, it was amazing. It was great. It was a man of few words, my dad. I, I get the talking from my mother's side of the family. But, it, <laughs> but I was never in any doubt about, about that he loved me. He, he wasn't from a generation of... People that said, son, we need to talk about our feelings, you know, let's hug. He was not... He would just, my dad would just say, aye. And... But you knew, what he, you knew what he meant when he said, aye, you know. And the relationship that I, had with my, that I have with my father is, uh, is not unlike the relationship I have with the old country. I, you know, with Scotland, I, I, you know, I complain about it, I grumble about it, I can, I can be mean about it sometimes, but, but, I, but I love it beyond reason. It's where I'm from, it's what I am. Um, and <clears throat> last week, uh, just as we're, uh, you, know, um, you know, we were cleaning out some stuff, to t we were going to make, you know, the room more comfortable for him when he got out of hospital. Uh, anyway, we were cleaning out some stuff and uh, I found a letter, of, well, my sister found a letter of accommodation, uh, commendation from his bosses at the post office. It seems it, it, this thing had been written in 1961. Um, he'd had it in his pants since 1961. <laughs> About a fight had broken out in the mail trains where he used to work, and he'd stopped it. You know, he'd got in the way, and people were very grateful. It was a terrible incident. And it was, the incident was dated September 1961. Now, I was born in May 1962. So, you know, the commendation was around about the time I was conceived. And I mentioned that to my father in hospital uh, <laughs> last week. You know, I said, that was a big month. And he said, aye. <laughs> And 
We, uh, it's true. He was a strong man, my dad. We didn't always get along. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I've got some opinions about stuff. And, and um, you know, we, we got it straight, you know, years ago. But when I was a teenager, you know, that the night after my sister's wedding, we got into a fight. Um, well, well, not really a fight. He, he said if I stopped, didn't stop being a jerk, he'd hit me and I ran away. But we were... <laughs> but I want to tell you about who he was. When I went into rehab, in the, I was in the south of England, and my parents took the bus, my mother and father took the bus all the way from Scotland to this place in England, this rehab in England, a very alien environment for them. And they sat, they came into this room in the treatment center, and they sat, the counselor was there, and you know, everyone's sitting down, and we're all going to have the family talk. And my father said, he said, just before we start, everybody, uh, let me just say, Craig, I am not going to stop drinking. <laughs> and I said, all right. All right, you don't need to stop drinking. It's about me stopping drinking. Anyway, I, 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 I want to tell you something that happened last week. I was in the... My father had a mantra. He, he, he had a thing. He always used to... When I was going to show business, he... He's, you know, my mother said, get a trade. You must get a trade. You must, you know, have something to fall back on. But my father didn't say anything like that. He just said, do a, do a job that you love job satisfaction and you can be anything you want to be as long as you have job satisfaction you can be anything you want to be and, and he kept repeating that my brother and I used to tease him about it job satisfaction anything you want to be <laughs> and we were in the hospital last week in Scotland and my, and my father was dying and he, know, he knew he was dying and uh, and I, my son was there with me uh, he's four and a half uh, and my son was in and, and he, he drew a picture from my dad of some trees and you know, a beautiful day, and he, we put it up on the wall, and, um, and he sang my dad, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, um, you know, which everybody wants to hear when they're in pain, and <laughs> it's the middle of January, and, you know, and my son sang him the whole thing, you know, you know Dasher and Dancer and, uh, and the whole thing, and, you know, and he got through that, but then something happened, my son said, oh, I've got a great idea, and he went underneath uh, my dad's hospital bed. And he sang, he said, he said, I'm, I'm going to sing a song and you can't see me. For, a, for some reason he thought that'd be very funny. Yeah? <laughs> uh, maybe I'll try it here one night. And, uh, the, <laughs> and, and he sang, just as my father was lying in my bed, my son sang a song that he picked up from one of the kids, you know, all these endless kids' albums that come out. <laughs> my life's full of them. And, and my son sang this. We were sitting there with my dad and the great drama of the, of the deathbed. And my son sang... You can be anything you want to be. You can be. And I saw my dad, even in the pain, you know, something like that, and a smile crept across his face. And it, and it was, it was fantastic. I, I miss him. You didn't know him. That's your loss. He was a great man. And uh, it's hard to say goodbye to people. It's hard to say goodbye to your parents. And I, when, I, when I left my dad, we got it straight. I said goodbye to him. And I, I couldn't speak, so, I, so I, a gesture came to me which, which I, I, I felt worked, and I, and I think he knew it as well. I, I punched my chest and I threw him my heart. Good night, Dad. <laughs>